our living world hello friends my name is baby i am very happy to meet you all i have come here to learn more and more things we can see many colorful pictures and animation hey the teacher is coming get ready good morning children good morning ma'am children this is our first science class today we are going to start with our first chapter the living world living world what is it ma'am this world where we live is wonderful and beautiful with many kinds of things such as trees plants butterfly fishes sun birds moon cars furniture buses and many more these objects are differentiated as natural objects and artificial objects the natural objects are those which exist on their own in this world such as trees plants butterfly fishes sun birds and moon other objects which are created by man are called artificial objects they are tables cars lamps chair building etc living and non living things now let us see what are living things and non living things natural objects like cat dog bird and plant have life they are known as living objects whereas objects like sun moon table chair and car do not have life they are called non living objects difference between living and non living things now let us see how we differentiate between a living thing and a non living thing living things can move they move from place to place in search of food and to take shelter let us see some of them a rabbit can run a dog can walk a frog can jump or hop fishes can swim and some parts of the plant move towards the sunlight living things need food they need food for energy which helps them to move from place to place and to grow fishes grab their food in the water cats drink milk birds eat grains all living things breathe but different animals breathe through different body parts such as lungs gills air holes and skin most of the plants breathe through tiny pores in their leaves called stomata animals like dogs and cats breathe through their lungs fishes breathe through gills frogs breathe through air holes let us see an example take two jars with live cockroaches inside close the jar one with fully closed lid and another jar with holes in the lid 
leave them for a day or two what happens the cockroaches in the jar which do not have hole in the lid die the cockroaches in the other jar with hole on the lid survive the cockroaches in the second jar had supply of air through the hole in the lid hence they live likewise a potted plant when kept in open survive but when you close it with a box it will also die for want of air all living things feel they react when you touch them or when you love or hate them living things show their feelings by crying and laughing living objects whether plant or animal do not remain the same they grow big and multiply their kind which is called reproduction a baby grow into a man a chick grows into a hen a plant grows into a tree we have just had a small discussion regarding the reproduction of living things though plants and animals both are living things they differ in many aspects let us learn about it now ma'am we all love young animals like the kittens and the pups yes all kids love to play with kittens and pups we will see how they grow into big animals a baby grow into a man a pup grow into a dog a chick grows into a hen but this growth stop after certain period in case of human beings and animals but plants grow continuously till they die let us see how they change in their form and shape a baby grow into a man a pup grow into a dog your human body or an animal retain the same form and shape even after growing into an adult but as you see in case of plants they change their shape when they grow from a seedling into a tree you can find that human and animals reproduce young ones of their own kinds you must have seen dogs or cats around your place with small one yes ma'am we have a pet dog in our house it gave birth to five little puppies your horse gives birth to a colt a dog gives birth to a pup a cow to a calf a kangaroo to a buck a mother to a baby a hen lays an egg and the chick will hatch out of the egg other birds like crow parrot and sparrow build their nest in a safe place and then they lay their eggs in the nest lizards snakes and frogs also reproduce by laying eggs let us see the life cycle of a frog as you see in the picture a frog lays eggs the next stage of the egg is called the embryo then it changes into a tadpole where it crosses three stages and in the final stage it gets the form of a frog now let us see what is oviparous and viviparous animals such as snakes and fish which reproduce by laying eggs are called oviparous animals such as cat and dog which reproduce by giving birth to young ones are called viviparous in case of plants they reproduce through a seed or a stem example sow a seed 
in the soil and water. After two or three days, a seedling will come out of the seed. This grows bigger and bigger. And in case of reproduction through stem, take a stem cutting of a rose plant and plant it in the soil. In few days, the stem develops into a plant with flowers. Plant life We are going to learn more about plants, their root, shoot, leaves and the beautiful flowers. In this chapter, we are going to study in detail about the various parts of a plant. Have you observed a small plant? As a whole, it is called a plant. But it can be divided into parts. How can a plant be divided into parts, ma'am? Like animals, plants also have different parts performing different function. Oh, interesting! Look at this picture of a full plant. You will observe two main parts in the plant. The part which remains under the ground is called the root system and the part that grows above the ground is called the shoot system. Below the soil, we have the root and above the soil, we have main stem, branch, leaf, flower and fruit. Structure of the root system The roots always grows down into the soil to form the base of a plant. From the main root, a number of roots arise. The roots are differentiated into two kinds, the tap root and the fibrous root. In the tap root system, there is a single main root from which the secondary and the tertiary roots arise. The tap root system is found in balsam, brinjal, neem and mango. In this type of root system, a bunch of roots grow from the base of the stem. This fibrous root is found in grass, wheat, onion and rice. Functions of the root system Now, let us see the function of the roots. The three main functions of roots are fixation, absorption and storage. In this picture, you can find the root fixes the plant into the soil. It helps in absorption of dissolved mineral salts from the soil and supply them to the stem. In some plants like carrot and beetroot, the roots store excess food prepared by the plant which swell up and become edible. The stored food is used by the plant later. Structure and function of the shoot system. The part of the plant above the ground is called the shoot. The shoot bears stem, branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. The stem grows above the ground. It holds the plant upright and supports the branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. In case of climbers, the stem is weak. Therefore, it needs a support to grow. In some plants like sugarcane and potato, the stem stores the excess food prepared by the plant and become the edible part of the plant. The next important part of a plant is the leaf. It is green in color due to the presence of green pigment called chlorophyll. The flat and broad part of the leaf is called leaf blade. In the middle of the leaf blade is the main vein. There are a number of veins arising from the midrib and running towards the margin of the leaf. The tiny pores on the leaf 
are called stomata. Photosynthesis The leaf is called the food factory of plant. Let us see how the leaf prepares food for the plant. The leaf prepares food with the help of carbon dioxide from the air, water from the soil and sunlight. This process is called photosynthesis. Some plants like the mushroom and the mold depends on other dead and decayed organisms for their food. Now, let us see what is meant by transpiration. Look at this picture of a plant. The excess water in the plant goes out into the air in the form of water vapour through minute pores in the leaf called stomata. This process is called transpiration. This is an enlarged picture of a stomata. Plants use the stomata to breathe. Types of plants Plants are classified into three kinds which are called herbs, shrubs and trees based on their sizes. Herbs Herbs have thin but strong stems. Their stems stand upright and hold the leaves, flowers and fruits. Shrubs Shrubs have thicker stem than the herbs. A number of branches grow from the base of the stem. This gives the plant a thick bushy appearance. They generally do not grow very tall. Trees Trees have hard, woody stems. Trees grow very tall. They live for many years. Some trees live for hundreds of years. Like other parts of plants, even leaves are classified into two types. Simple leaf and compound leaf. Simple leaves are found in hibiscus and compound leaves are found in trees like the neem. Leaves are mostly green in color due to the presence of chlorophyll. But some plants have colored leaves. Colored leaves contain green pigment in addition to other colored pigments. Types of flowers You would have been to garden. Have you seen flowers? Yes ma'am. Flowers are the most beautiful parts of the plant. Yes. Do you know how the flowers are useful to the plants? Flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. Flowers changes into fruits. The fruits contain seeds within them which in turn helps in reproduction. Flowers differ in color, shape and size. Flowers grow in single or in bunches. Fruits are very tasty and healthy. Fruits contain lot of vitamins, minerals and calcium. There are various differences between one fruit and another. Some fruits like mango, plum and cherry contain only one seed within them. Some fruits such as goa, apple and orange have a few seeds within them. Some fruits like the papaya and the watermelon contains many seeds whereas in some fruits like the banana and the pineapple do not have seeds within them. Amazing Animals We all love animals, don't you? Yes, we are going to learn about animals. As there are variety in plants, animals also are classified into various types. They are generally categorized into six groups on the basis of certain features. 
they are the insects fishes amphibians reptiles birds and mammals insects first let us start with the smallest creature which forms the largest group of animals living on land water and air cockroach butterfly grasshopper mosquito leaf insect ant dragonfly stick insect and the bed bug parts of a insect take a look at this picture of a cockroach observe the parts of the body the body of a cockroach consists of head thorax and abdomen the head bears a pair of feelers compound eyes and mouth parts and the abdomen has four legs life cycle insect passes through a series of stages in their development from an egg stage to an adult stage this is called life cycle or metamorphosis let us study the life cycle of a butterfly take a look at this picture there are four stages in the life cycle of a butterfly egg larva pupa and an adult insects such as butterfly mosquito and moth undergo all these four stages in their life social behavior of an insect have you ever observed a group or colony of ants it is very interesting to watch ants they are never idle they are always active and busy they always live in a colony or an ant hill there are four types of ants male ants female ants worker ants and the soldier ants fish now we shall go to the next type of animal the fish fish lives in water it breathes the oxygen dissolved in water it cannot live on land fish has a boat shaped body it has a head body and a tail it swims with the help of fins it has a pair of eyes in the head it breathes through their gills it reproduces by laying eggs amphibians next comes the amphibians these are animals which live both on land and the water example of an amphibian is a frog frog lives both on land and water the body of a frog is divided into a head and a trunk it has a pair of bulging eyes on either side of its head they have two pairs of limbs a pair of four limbs in the front which are short and a pair of hind limbs at their back which are webbed to help them swim in the water it has a long sticky tongue to catch insects it reproduces by laying eggs on land it breathes through lungs and in water through its moist skins an interesting kind of animals are the reptiles lizards snakes and turtles are all reptiles let us examine the body parts of a reptile the reptile is divided into the head trunk and tail dry horny scales cover the skin they have a pair of limbs to crawl they have long tongues to catch insects birds birds are the most beautiful among the animal group they vary in 
color, size and behavior. Like the crow, parrot, pigeon, duck, hen, sparrow, peacock, etc. The body of a bird is divided into head, neck and trunk. The jaws are modified into beaks. They have the wings to help them fly. They have a pair of legs to walk. A bird lays eggs which hatches into a baby bird. Mammals Animals that give birth to young ones are called mammals. Have you seen a cat or a dog feeding its small ones? Mammals give birth to young ones and nourish their young ones with milk. The body of a mammal is divided into head, neck, trunk and limbs. Food and Feeding Habits of Animals Plants prepare their own food. How do animals find their food? Come on, let's see. Food is required by all living things, plants, animals and human beings. Unlike plants, animals cannot prepare their own food. They depend on plants and other animals for their food. Let us see their food habits. Insects Insects such as butterfly suck nectar from flowers. Mosquitoes suck blood from bodies of other animals. They have special mouth parts to pierce the skin and suck the blood. Reptiles A lizard has a long, sticky tongue to catch the insect. Frogs and snakes swallow their food. They do not chew them. Birds Birds have only beak. They do not have teeth or tongue. Some birds eat nuts, some grains and some eat fruits. Some birds even eat meat. Their beaks are designed according to their food habits. Parrots and hornbills have hard curved beaks to crush the grains and nuts. Pigeons, sparrow and peacock have sharp, hard, pointed and horny beaks. Birds like hawk, vulture, eagle and owl have strong hooked beaks to tear the flesh from their prey. Woodpecker have strong and chisel shaped beak to drill hole on the tree. Swallows and flycatchers have broad and short beak which is sticky inside to catch flies. Birds like hoop have long and slender beaks to pull out the insect from flowers and holes. Duck have broad and flat beak with stainers to stain mud and water when they catch insects and worms. Cranes and kingfishers use their long pointed beaks to catch the fish from the pond. Mammals Mammals are grouped as herbivorous, that is, plant eating animals, carnivorous, that is, flesh eating animals, and omnivorous, that is, these animals eat both plant and flesh. Animals like cows, goat, rabbits, elephant, giraffes, and horses are herbivorous. These animals have long jaws. The jaws have sharp front teeth to bite the plants. Animals like lion, tiger, leopard and wolf are carnivorous. These animals have sharp, pointed and curved teeth to tear its prey. Animals like bear, dog and cat are omnivorous. 
they eat both plant and flesh dogs and cats lick milk with their tongue movement of animals have you seen animal moving from one place to another let us find out why they move what is the need for an animal to move can anybody answer ma'am is it in search of food and water yes they move from place to place in search of food water and for shelter each group of animal have different organs for movement let us see how they move insects insects like ant cockroach bed bug have three pair of legs to move some insects like butterfly and house fly have wings to fly they do not fly very high or long distance fish fish is an aquatic animal which lives in water it swims in water with the help of fins it moves fins forward and backward to swim in the water reptiles lizards and chameleons have two pair of short weak limbs to move mammals animals such as cows goats camels cats lions tigers dogs and deer move with limbs they have two pairs of limbs a pair of fore limbs and a pair of hind limbs animals such as giraffe zebra and deer have long slender legs to run fast rabbits have short fore limbs and long and strong hind limbs to leap as well as run camels have long legs with padded foot to walk on sand elephants have legs which look like a pillar to support their heavy body weight birds birds use their wings to fly and their legs to walk hop run and climb the claws in their legs differ from one bird to another depending on their mode of life swans and ducks have webbed toes to swim in water crows and sparrow have four toes three in the front and one at the back this helps them to hold on the trees eagles and vultures have strong hooked claws to catch their prey firmly hens and cocks have sharp and hard claws to dig the ground to find the buried worms parrots and woodpeckers have two toes pointing upward and two toes pointing downwards these toes help them to cling on the bark of the tree cranes kingfishers and herons are long legged birds their toes are spread out and help them to wade through muddy water without getting their feather wet how birds fly do you know how the birds fly we shall learn how they use their wings to fly the cute little birds have always attracted us by their interesting behavior how many of you have the hobby of watching birds fly i love to watch birds fly but ma'am how do they fly a bird's body consists of a head tail wing and legs as studied earlier the shape of the body is that of a boat this shape helps it to float in air easily the bones are hollow and filled with air this makes the body light and helps the bird to fly the feathers are the main part which help them fly we will see some more about their feathers down feathers flight feathers and tail feathers are the different kinds of feathers for a bird down feathers 
help the birds to keep themselves warm. The feathers or otherwise called the flight feathers that help them to fly and the tail feather attached to the tailbone helps them to change the direction. The birds flap their wings which will help them to move upward and downward which is called the upward stroke and the downward stroke. Sparrows fly at lower heights. Kites and vultures fly at a very great heights. Pigeons, swallows and crows can fly long distances. Cocks and peacocks fly only short distance. Birds like kiwi, ostrich and penguin cannot fly at all because their body is heavy. They are called flightless birds. Homes of animals Cats and dogs live with us. What about other animals? Come, let us go and see. Animals too need shelter to protect themselves from their enemies and bad weather. They keep their young ones safe in their homes. Wild animals Wild animals generally live in thick forests, among bushes and in their dens. Examples are lion and tiger. Elephants and deer take shelter under tall trees. Zebras live among tall grasses. Monkeys live on trees. Snakes in holes and burrows. Domestic animals Domestic animals live in the shelter made by man. Cows in shed. Horses in stable. Pigs in sty. Fish in aquarium. And dogs in kennel. Homes built by animals. Rabbits build their burrows. Ants build anthills. Bees build their hives. Spider builds their webs. Birds build their nest using feather, grass, paper, wool, cotton and many more materials. They build their nest to lay eggs. Tailor bird makes its nest by stitching leaves together. Weaver bird weaves its nest out of grass, leaves and other materials. Owl and woodpecker makes holes on the trunk of the trees. Patridges dig the ground in a safe place among bushes. But cuckoo is a lazy bird. It does not build its own nest. It lays its egg in the crow's nest. The eggs of cuckoo are hatched and their little ones are taken care of the crow itself. Human body We have learned about plants and animals. Now let us know about ourselves. The human body is a wonderful mission created by God. It will be very interesting to learn about its performance. Let us first see how human body is made up of. Cells Living organisms are made up of small structures called cells. The cell is the basic structural unit of a living organism. Cells are very very small. They cannot be seen with naked eyes. They can be seen only through a microscope. Tissues Cells when grouped together form a tissue. Tissue form an organ. Organs Tissues combine together to form larger units which are called organs. Examples are stomach, intestine, liver, kidney and heart. These organs carry out various functions inside the body. Digestive system 
let us know about our digestive system it helps to digest the food we eat the complex food materials are broken down into simple substances the waste materials are excreted out through the excretory system muscular and skeletal system the muscular and skeletal system gives our body the shape and support respiratory system this system helps to supply oxygen to the blood and removes carbon dioxide from the blood there are a pair of lungs on either side of the heart nervous system the sense organs in our body sends message to the brain and the brain orders for function through the nervous system circulatory system this is otherwise called a transporting system of our body it supplies nutrients to different parts of our body through blood and also collects waste materials from various parts of our body sense organs how many sense organs do we have there are five sense organs in our body can anyone name them eyes ears nose tongue and skin good i will tell you how our sense organs help us in our daily life eyes help us to see the objects around us eyelids protect the eyes from external danger eyelashes prevent dust from entering our eyes ears are the organs which helps us to hear the sound created around us the nose helps us to smell the tongue is an organ of taste with taste buds on their surface which helps us to taste different types of foods human body is fully covered with smooth layer called the skin the skin protects the organs inside the body it is a very important sense organ food and preservation i am feeling very hungry come let us learn about food today i am going to teach you all about food which is one of the basic need of all living things why do we need food for our energy to work yes but there are many other uses of food apart from the energy it gives it helps in repairing worn out tissues it builds up a body and promotes growth it also helps us to fight against diseases and keeps us healthy nutrition food like bread sweet fruits honey rice wheat and some vegetables contain sugar and starch which are called carbohydrates they give us lot of energy food like butter ghee milk products eggs fish oil nuts coconut and cashews are rich in fat fat gives more energy than carbohydrates food like milk meat fish cheese egg pulses beans and peas are rich content of proteins vitamins and mineral salts protect our body from diseases they regulate the different functions performed by our body let us see some of the food which contains vitamins milk carrot tomato meat fruits egg and many more having learnt about the uses of food and their contents we must also know that some parts of fruits and vegetables are of no use to our body they are called roughage now let us learn about 
How to preserve food and the importance of preserving food. Before eating raw food or preserving them, they must be properly washed with water to remove the dust and germs which may be present on the surface of the food. Preservation of food. There are various methods by which food can be preserved. Germs cannot grow in low temperatures, so food can be preserved by refrigerating them. Food can be preserved in airtight containers which prevent germs from entering the food. Food can also be preserved by drying them. Water content is one of the reason for germs to grow. Some food stuff such as jam are preserved in strong sugar solution. Sugar drains water from germs and kills them. Matters and materials In this chapter, we are going to learn about matter. Now, I am going to teach you about the materials around us. Materials can be solid, liquid or gas. Solid Solids are hard and mostly have a definite shape. They occupy space and therefore have a definite volume. The particles which make a solid material are tightly packed. However, they have different shapes. Liquid Unlike solid, liquid do not have a definite shape. They take the shape of the container in which they are poured. The particles in the liquid are not tightly packed. Gases Particles in gases are very loosely packed. They do not have a fixed shape. They can be filled in other material like balloons and gas cylinders. Change of state We have seen three states of matter. Solid, liquid and gas. Let us do some experiments to find out if matter can change from one state to another. The process of conversion of liquid into solid is called freezing. The process of conversion of solid into liquid is called melting. The process of converting liquid into gas is called evaporation. The process of converting gas into liquid is called condensation. Uses of matter Solid such as bricks, cement, wood and iron bars are used in the construction of a building. Liquids are consumed by us as juices. Water as a liquid has many uses like drinking, washing, cooking, etc. Air with oxygen content is essential for breathing. Air is used to fill vehicle tubes, balloons, balls, etc. Solubility of substances Can you dissolve sugar and salt? Come, let us see. Dear students, in the previous chapter, we have learnt about solid, liquid, gases, and their change in state. Today, we are going to see the special property of water of dissolving a variety of substances. Can anybody name some substances? Ma'am, at home I have seen mummy dissolving sugar in coffee and tea. I have noticed mummy mixing salt when she cooks. Yes, let us do the experiment in the classroom. Salt and sugar, which gets dissolved in water, is called the solute. Water which dissolves substances is called the solvent. Take two glass tumblers. Pour equal quantity of water in each tumbler. Mix a spoon of crystal salt in one tumbler and a spoon of powdered salt in the other tumbler. You can see the powdered salt dissolves much faster than the crystal salt. Now, let us do the experiment where heating dissolves. Take a beaker, pour some water into it, add salt to it. 
it gets dissolved. Keep on adding salt till salt remains undissolved. Now heat the water on a stove. The leftover salt also get dissolved. Some substances like glass beads, stone, wood do not get dissolved in water. They are called insoluble substances. Take a beaker with some water. Put some small stones into it and stir it well. Does the stone get dissolved? No. Heat it on a stove. Even now, it does not get dissolved. So, a stone is a insoluble substance. Changing weather and seasons. Because this is winter. What are the other seasons? I'm going to tell you what is weather. Weather is the condition of atmosphere in the environment around us. Weather changes from time to time. Sometimes it is hot and sometimes it is cold. Weather can be classified as follows. Sunny Windy Cloudy Rainy In the morning when the sun appears, it is not very hot. But at noon, when the sun is right above our head, the temperature is the hottest. Again in the evening, when the sun sets, the temperature comes down. So, the movement of sun changes the weather conditions. The weather becomes cool when clouds gather in the atmosphere. As the clouds hide, the sun above it the weather changes. When the rain clouds are formed, we get rains. Monsoon winds bring seasonal rains. During rains, the weather is very cold. Slow winds are called breeze and heavy winds are called storm. When the wind blows, the weather changes cool. When a particular weather condition prevails for a longer time, it is called a season. Summer is the hottest season of the year. During summer, the sun's rays hit the earth vertically and therefore it is very hot. We generally wear light cotton clothes during this season. Rainy season follows summer. Due to the heat of the sun, during the summer, the water gets evaporated. This water vapor forms rain clouds and finally, the clouds drop as rain to the land. We use umbrellas and raincoats to go out during rainy season. Children love to make paper boats and float them in the water. In winter, it becomes very cold. Some places even get snowfalls. We wear thick clothing during winter. Our universe. Now we are going to go very far away from Earth. Can you find out where it is? Yes, our solar system. Our universe consists of the Sun, Earth, other planets, Moon and stars. Let us learn about each one in the solar system. Sun The Sun is a huge ball of fire and burning gases that gives the earth heat and light. The sun is the head of a big family called the solar system. The sun along with its nine planets and the moon are called the solar system. Planets There are nine planets in the solar system. All the planets revolve around the sun in their respective orbits. I will show you one by one, starting from the planet nearest to the sun and end with the planet which is farthest to the sun. Mercury Venus Earth Mars Jupiter Saturn Uranus Neptune and Pluto Moon Next, we will see about the moon, our closest neighbor, in the sky. 
Just as the planets move around the sun, the moon moves around the earth. The moon is called earth satellite. It has large holes called the craters. The moon does not have its own light. It receives light from the sun and reflects on our earth. Stars You must have seen stars twinkling in the sky. Have you wondered what they are? I love to watch the stars in the night sky. They look like diamonds. Like our sun, stars are also huge ball of fire. But as they are very far away from the earth, they appear as tiny dots of light. There are millions and millions of stars in the sky. People like to see the group of stars which look like the shape of some animals. Some of them are the great bear, Leo and the Scorpius. Mode of transport I am going to go for a ride. Will you come with me too? Everyone like to go for a journey. Today, we are going to see the different modes of transport. They are roadways, airways and waterways. On road, there are various vehicles that can be used. Some of the common means are roadways, electric trains, bus, car, motorcycle, bicycle, bullock cart and auto rickshaw. Airways Some means of transport like aeroplanes and helicopters are used as transport in the sky. Rockets are used to go away from the earth. Waterways Some means of transport like ships, steamers and boats move only on water.